if we all start eating these tiny little insects, can we really save the world? Let's find out. It's not bad. <laughs> I'm gonna let my girlfriend try one later in the video, uh, see if she likes it. So apparently we are in the middle of a crisis. The UN calls it the climate crisis. Environmental degradation, natural disasters, weather extremes, food and water insecurity, economic disruption and conflicts. I would say that sounds pretty bad. But I wouldn't blame you if you never think about this stuff. I mean, for a lot of people, these things are far away from their day-to-day -day life. And honestly, that includes me. But our impact on the planet is undeniable. If you look at this graph, you can see all the CO2 emissions ever since the Industrial Revolution in 1840. And you can clearly see that rapid increase all the way up to now, which is causing global temperatures to slowly rise. In 2016, the Paris Agreement was signed. This is an international treaty signed by 195 members of the United Nations. And the goal of this agreement is to limit the global rise in temperature to a maximum of two degrees above pre-industrial levels. And in order to achieve that, you, me, and all the people living on this world have to roughly cut our CO2 emissions in half by 2030. So now you might be thinking, why should I start eating insects? What's the point? Well, it's because a big part of our greenhouse gas emissions come from agriculture, land use, and livestock. And over the years, there's been a growing number of insect farms popping up. The idea behind all that is that insects provide a reliable source of proteins while also being very resource efficient. In theory, if we all start eating bugs instead of meat, that'll drastically lower our output of CO2, methane, and some other gases, and we'll be able to save the world. So this way, it really sounds like replacing that Friday evening steak with a worm salad is a good idea. But there are also some difficulties to overcome, and I'll talk about those in a bit. Farming insects definitely has benefits over traditional agriculture. The amount of feed and water needed to produce the same amount of meat is way less. The emission of greenhouse gases is negligible, and the amount of land needed to produce food for the animals is, in the case of crickets, 13 times less compared to cows. And if this is your face right now, I get it, because eating insects is very uncommon where I live and in the Western world in general. But actually, 80% of the world's nations already eat them. It's most common in tropical countries, and some very popular dishes include deep-fried silkworms, marinated rice grasshoppers, and red ant eggs. And look, I can handle a lot of stuff, but I'll never forget how shocked I was when I saw this video of a woman in the middle of the jungle deep frying a live tarantula and hearing that crispy sound as she ate this whole spider in one single bite. Now, tarantula farms aren't really a thing. Crickets, however, are a very popular meat to farm. And just to give you an example of how that works, you're now looking at a small cricket farm in New Zealand. And can you believe that this whole farm is located in just two shipping containers? Now, this is a smaller farm, so you can't really compare it to a full-scale ranch. But it just shows you that you don't really need a lot of space to start farming insects. They breed the crickets in boxes filled with egg crates, because it mimics a natural environment with cracks and places to hide. It takes seven weeks for the crickets to fully grow up and then they are ready to be harvested. In the case of this farm, they use nitrogen gas to humanely kill the crickets. After that, they are cleaned, oven dried and ready to be processed into whatever food you like. Or you can just eat them as they are. Can I just say that I specifically ordered the bag of crickets just for this video? And I'm not used to eating insects, so yeah, I'm pretty proud of myself. So basically, to summarize, insects are just as good of a source of protein as regular meat, if not better. Farming insects barely leaves a carbon footprint, which is great to counter global warming, and you need way less land in order to effectively farm them. Now let's talk about the other side of the spectrum, because there are a couple of problems. First of all, there's a lack of health and safety regulations. Eating insects is new in Western culture. And well, they can carry some nasty bacteria. So if you want to include insects into your diet, it's pretty important that you know where they came from and that they were produced in a place free of diseases. 
There's also a general lack of knowledge and research about the long-term effects of eating insects. And they can potentially be dangerous. It's already known that insects can cause an allergic reaction for people with a shellfish allergy. But by far the biggest issue and probably the reason why there's no McMaggot is simply a cultural resistance. In Western countries, we have this natural disgust towards bugs. Most people would probably throw away a bag of flour if they found a maggot inside. So it's gonna take a long time before we even think about eating that maggot. I have the perfect example for this. I thought it was so funny when I read about this. So lobster is a luxury food, right? Just imagine yourself enjoying a juicy lobster, a glass of champagne on the side while overlooking a beautiful sunset. Amazing. But in the 17th century, when the English first settled in what we now know as America, lobster was considered absolute trash. And it was something only the poor would eat. Prisoners of that time were mostly fed lobster, and they considered it a punishment. And that's because when people first started settling on the shores of what was then called New England, there were so many lobsters. And after every storm, hundreds would wash up on the shores. So people were constantly eating them while also being in this smell of thousands of dead lobsters on the beach. So understandably, they were done with them. And this created this negative image around lobsters that lasted for multiple generations. In the mid 1800s, they found out that lobsters were really easy to put in a can. So they started using them as food rations for soldiers during the civil war. Combine that with the rise of railroads throughout the country. And before you knew it, canned lobsters were everywhere. And people that didn't grow up in the region of origin, they had no clue about the image of lobsters being something for the lower class. So the demand for lobsters all over the country just blew up. And because they had to be shipped alive, that led to higher prices, which eventually resulted in lobsters becoming a luxury food. If lobsters can make it from rags to riches, who knows what we'll be eating in a hundred years, right? Now let's get back to the main question of the video. Can eating insects really save the world? The short answer is yes, but there is a catch. You know, farming insects and eating insects can have a pretty big impact in a positive way on our greenhouse gas emissions. But the agricultural sector uh, is only a part of all worldwide emissions. The biggest one still being our energy use. So insect farming can definitely contribute to that goal of cutting our CO2 output in half by 2030. But at the same time, we also have to look at other sectors and find alternatives there. And the last thing I want to mention is that this is not the only solution to solve the CO2 output in the agriculture sector. I read this article um, and I'll link it in the description, but it basically said that if we would only have grass fed livestock, that alone will also cause a significant reduction in greenhouse gas output. So as they say, there are multiple ways leading to Rome. We finally reached the part where I'm gonna try to have my girlfriend uh, try one of these crickets. I've been eating them during the whole recording of this video. So I think it's only fair if she tried one as well. Before I flip the camera around, uh, I gotta say thank you. My last video completely blew up and um, yeah, that was just amazing to see. So thank you, really. And if you have feedback or any topics you'd like to see in the future, um, yeah, just let me know. All right, let me flip the camera around. There she is. There's the cricket. Are you ready? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's uh, give it a shot. Don't think about it. <laughs> it's not tasty. <laughs> it's not tasty. <laughs> it's not tasty. <laughs>